Welcome to the Impact Report. I'm your host, Elijah Gill, and we're here with the multi-talented Nico Annan, the star of P-Valley. You play Uncle Clifford so artistically. Thank you. Now, you were initially in Katori Hall's play. Mm -hmm. Was it a difficult transition going from stage to screen? It was actually informative. I had time to really hone the craft and let the character speak to me. I'm a gay man playing a non-binary person. I have encountered a lot of people, for whatever reason, may not feel safe enough to talk about it or it's not something that's really broached. I've done a couple of interviews with some cis heterosexual black brothers that never took up space to ask questions because it was something that they kind of like stayed away from. Oh, you know, that's over there, you know, oh, that's gay, that's gay. And it's crazy to play this character that's bridging those people closer. Uncle Clifford can be so much to some and still so pure. I know that we don't always have space where we can be vulnerable and be transparent, even on camera just as an actor, to be able to be in this black body, this chocolate body, and be pensive. You immersed yourself in this character for years. When you see Uncle Clifford's of the world and you watch the news and you see them getting killed for who they are, how do you educate those who are the ones doing the killing to change their mindset? The perpetrators, they have come to me for whatever reason. I, I haven't had to seek them out. That is a blessing that is also rare. Yeah. What I'm experiencing is completely rare. It is not the norm. Is it mostly black men? Yes. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. They quantify and say, you know, I watched the show with my girl. <laughs> they, they, they gotta say, they gotta yeah, put that I in. I the show with my girl. And I love that too, because it's a family affair. You know what I mean? Everybody's getting educated. That is correct. That is correct. And his brother said to me, I used to beat up on people like you. Wow. He was talking to Uncle Clifford in his head, you know? And he said, I see you, but I, I never thought that you had a family like the person that I like shot at. That told me the, the charge that I have playing this role, it told me like how much of a difference we make, because even if it's just one, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We've all been bullied to different extents, you know? I've been bullied, like, you know, when people ask me, how you get so confident? Because I've been through the fire. And look, I wish things could be different, but sometimes in life you gotta take an L to get to the W. And it's unfortunately one of them times. Uh, get you out. Hey, this building got enough water damage, and you know how we do. We don't do no damn tears. For those who never step foot in a strip club, never mm -hmm. step foot in the hood, how can they relate to this story? Lots of different entry points. I think through the music, I think they relate through glam of the show, you know, through relationships. The girls that work in the club and the men, the brothers that are there, I think that you see the real family bond. We call it the family, the chosen family of these denizens of this Chuckalisan South, you know. I love how people can see the sisterhood between Mercedes and Keyshawn and still see that sisterhood between Mercedes and Uncle Clifford. This is a human story. It is not just something that only black Southerners will resonate with. And I think that the accolades that the show gets, it elevates and removes the stigma of this is only a this show. This is not just an LGBTQ show. This is not just a black woman show. This is not just a Southern show. This, this is a full on show. The gangsters, the brokers, you know what I'm saying? The, <laughs> the preachers, the scammers and all actually are actually reflected in the show, so. Mm. Who's, who's mentored you the most in Hollywood? I'll say George Faison. I first met him when I auditioned for Bubbling Brown Sugar. I was Doug Eskew's younger version. He choreographed it and it was with Diane Carroll. And so I was around these Hollywood elite, you know, and here I was just tagging along, like what's happening? And then one day I found myself at the foot of Maya Angelou at her house when she was cooking some greens and talking to me, she looked me in my face and said, I have something. She knew that I knew it. And it's not about being cocky, it's about being blessed and it's about being in your truth and knowing that. So for me, George helped create a space where I didn't have to search. And if someone who is not even born today while I'm creating this can look at this art, 
and they can see themselves or they can see a community and have a different sense of empathy, I did my job. I'm real happy with that.